color is green. It yeah, is very green. green. Um, the mysteries of how color is like. Hi, I'm Shannon. I know most of you, but I'm Shannon, and I am with Sustainable Indiana 2016, which is a bicentennial legacy project of Earth Charter Indiana. And our focus for the past 10 years, um, due to the leadership vision of the Earth Charter members, as well as a certain John Gibson, who um, some of you know, um, has been to uh, create a green legacy for this state's bicentennial. So, a hundred years ago, at the Indiana Centennial, um, Indiana founded the state park system. Um, originally, with the purchase of uh, McCormick Park and then Turkey Run later in the year. Um, now, over 32 properties that uh, see 16 million people visit every year. So, it has become a wonderful gift that our forebears a uh, hundred years ago decided to leave our state. And so, it is appropriate at this milestone in our state's history that we do something to give the same kind of natural gift to future generations of Hoosiers. And we have uh, arrived at a moment where the planet is in peril, and everybody here knows that. Um, and so addressing uh, how we move forward in a sustainable way is probably the best and most necessary legacy we could be leaving um, this year. So. Uh, with that, uh, we, uh, our mission has been to uh, document, celebrate, um, and share some of the things that Hoosiers are already doing that we want to build on, positive examples of um, sustainability in action. And this is really total spectrum stuff. Um, so we call those solutions green lights. And this year we're going to be giving out green light awards to all of the stories we've collected as well as many more around the state. Um, as part of our celebration. Um, moving forward, um, I'll touch upon our future idea for resilient communities and how that ties into local circular economies. Um, but yeah, so right now we have um, some in-house programs um, that you can get involved in uh, to kind of take part in our celebration year. One of them is an art interactive project called Hands on Indiana. Um, where people are taking pledges to improve their footprint in five key areas for five fingers of the hand, uh, air, water, uh, energy, um, waste, and biodiversity. And those themes are um, the artist Marilyn Gatton, who is our uh, artist in residence, has uh, determined that you can move in those areas from just merely informed or interested all the way down to indispensable um, through different stages. And if you go to the Hands on Indiana site, you can read all about um, behind each hand is a um, idea for what you can be doing, um, actions, information, and things you can get involved in. Um, and the pledge is not signed on a, on a form like many uh, things that we get on clipboards, but rather you trace your hand on repurposed computer uh, circuitry filament papers. Um, that she's harvesting from um, uh, trash computer keyboards. Um, and, uh, and it's meaningful for her because it's like the circuitry, um, the, the connection. Uh, you trace your hand, you cut it out, you can color it, and we're going to add it to the final art project. We're collecting these hands all over the state. So you can find out how you can make your own hand if you go to the website. Um, 366 Days of Climate are actions all year long. You can add your event to our calendar and our website. Um, if you do something, share it, tweet it, hashtag 366 Days of Climate, because what we do in isolation doesn't serve as a very good example, but what we share with our friends does. Uh, Meatless Monday, we have an in-house Meatless Monday campaign that we're doing also in connection, hopefully, with the city of Indianapolis, uh, Indie Veg Fest, and a few other organizations who are promoting uh, understanding diet as a link um, between um, what we do and how it affects the planet. Um, and then we're starting to wrap up our Tree of Hope campaign. Um, counties, organizations, University of Oliver, Indiana have planted over 250 trees in the last year um, as official bicentennial trees, um, which isn't just one tree, but a tree that they plant with a commitment to protecting Indiana's native forests. We also have a couple of pieces of media which we're really excited to tell you about. One is our book, um, 
since we felt like we'd already written the book on sustainable Hoosier practices, we thought we might as well write the book. So um, it's full of our, some of our favorite stories in um, different categories, uh, energy, schools, uh, buildings, um, everything from hempcrete to community gardens to wind projects to uh, time bank for uh, creating new alternate economic models. All kinds of great examples of communities coming together, individuals doing something brave, bold, and different. Um, some of my favorite stories you know, are, are, are people like Phil Teague, who worked in oil fields his whole life and decided to leave that job and start rectifying solar because he wanted to rectify the wrongs that oil had brought to what he saw was a planet in crisis. So, um, it's a great book on the back table, um, but you can also order yours at um, sustainableindiana2016.org slash shop, thanks to Dan who helped me build the shop. Um, we also have a CD, Hoosier Artists were inspired by what we had done uh, to celebrate the bicentennial that they came together under the uh, leadership of Jesse Lacey, Robert Midas, who um, helped create this fantastic gift of music to help help us celebrate the bicentennial year. Um, lots of local Hoosier artists and songs that are incredibly meaningful about the situation we find ourselves in on the planet. Um, and the incomparable Carrie Newcomer has a, a song on there too, if you like her. Uh, Green Legacy Communities, these are some of the awards we've given out uh, this just recently this year. Um, Dyer Indiana, White Indiana, uh, part of our mission to celebrate the good and the stuff we want to build on has been to reward cities and towns with official bicentennial awards for their resilient community work. Um, whether that be permeable pavers, renewable energy, rain barrels, composting, uh, education initiatives, increasing their recycling. Um, we want to take all of the great examples that we see cities and towns doing um, and um, make sure that people know that this is something worth celebrating and trying to move forward. And when John gives these award, he always says that this isn't an end point, that we now look to you to be the example of the next step. Um, I got to, as part of my job, which is very unusual, go to Paris this year for COP, or December for COP21. Um, I share this because one of the cool uh, public art projects that I encountered in front of the Hotel de Ville was this cool Paris 2050 visioning project where they had asked architects, renewable energy tech companies um, to come up with what is the vision? What is the vision for Paris in 2050? A completely renewable, sustainable city, a carbon negative city. And um, sometimes it's really hard to picture what a fully sustainable life looks like. I think that one of the biggest challenges for the environmental community um, in selling this vision that we all have um, to kind of the community at large is to not scare people into thinking that this is about what they're giving up. That what we really want for them is to wear hemp and eat granola and tofu and they can never go anywhere. <laughs> they can't leave their houses. Um, yes, in some ways we, there will be things we have to do less of, absolutely. But look at this picture and tell me you don't want to live here. This is amazing. So they took a beautiful city with such a rich, noble tradition of architecture and, and street to street loveliness as Paris and they made it even more breathtaking. And, um, but not breath harming because it is a anti-smog tower filled local produce growing renewable energy and the exciting part about this is all these technologies are available and so yeah this is a little space age looking I'm aware but you know it, it does kind of paint a beautiful postcard of kind of the urban cooling that is available when you take urban trees seriously and a local produce that's available even to a city the size of Paris if you if you think about space and vertical space um, in a new and uh, creative way. So, um, and so moving forward, how, how do we uh, capture that energy and how do we take our project and build a um, really cool example of what that looks like for Indiana? And this is just a little snippet from our website. But if you go to our solutions page, what you'll find is by region, solutions in all these categories. 
And what we hope to do at the end of this year, as we conclude our Dubai Centennial celebrations, is take all of these different areas in which solutions are found and get them to work together. Because schools have such an important role in agriculture and energy. And transportation has such an important role in how we educate our students and how we move food around the state. And recycling has such an important uh, role in jobs, in job creation, and uh, um, infrastructure. I mean, all of these things are connected. And sometimes they work together. But we, we have to build that example. And what we're going to do it is um, by trying to work together to find solutions community by community. And we're going to have some resilient cities who are kind of going to be championing this from Muncie uh, all the way to Indianapolis, um, who are really working to be the example of what does a city in the Midwest who wants to be fully sustainable, uh, what does that look like? So, we're excited to launch that project this year. Um, we're just getting it off the ground. Mayors and community leaders right now, but we hope that you will be part of it. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those great things. Um, talk to us online as much as you like. And uh, don't forget to uh, come to our Green Lights events. The same day will be posted on our Facebook later this week.